Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite soy boy, Gardner. Actually, I prefer soy man, thank you. Today we're gonna to be talking about the greatest gaming device to ever hit the market, the Steam Deck. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it and not everything is rosy and perfect. That's why I wanted to take a moment and examine some of the more pervasive myths about the deck. We're gonna cover a lot in this video, but if there's any myths that I don't touch on, make sure you leave a comment below and let me know. I will definitely be circling back and talking about other Steam Deck myths in a later video. Okay, the first myth I wanna tackle is one of the most pernicious ones out there. And that is that the internal screen resolution of the Steam Deck is too low res. Now this is objectively false, and I have two metrics by which uh, I've made this determination. The first is the PPI or pixels per inch. Now the Steam Deck's screen resolution is 1280 by 800 pixels and it has a seven inch screen. That means that the deck has 206 pixels per inch. Now that's kind of a meaningless number unless we have something to compare it to. So if we look at the Nintendo Switch, it has a seven inch screen. It's running at 1280 by 720 and it has 209 PPI. Now that's pretty par for the course if you ask me. But you also might be shocked to learn that a 27 inch 1080p monitor, which is one of the most common screen sizes, has a PPI of only 81. And how about a 4K monitor at 27 inches? Well, that's only 163 PPI. Now it might be unfair to compare a 27 inch screen that is four feet away from your face to a seven inch screen that's right here. But generally as a rule of thumb, the point of diminishing returns for a handheld screen is about 250 PPI. Now that is to say that around 250 to 300 PPI, the average person is not able to reliably perceive differences of greater PPI screens. So yes, a 200 PPI screen is around 80% of the so-called ideal PPI. But the fact of the matter is, the average person is not going to be able to see much of a difference, especially when they're not directly comparing the Steam Deck's screen to a higher resolution one. And at least to me, that's more than enough to say that this myth has been debunked on its own. However, there's another very powerful argument against a higher resolution screen in a device like the Steam Deck. It's power consumption, and that pun was totally intended. Not only does a higher res screen require more power to operate, but the GPU has to do more work to render a higher resolution image, and that consumes more power. And on an already power limited chip like the Steam Deck's GPU, an 800p screen offers a more optimal power consumption profile. And that also means that titles like God of War and Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga and Spider-Man and so many others offer extremely impressive performance, which simply would not be possible on a 1080p screen using the same GPU and the same settings. The truth of the matter is though that screen resolutions are subjective and we can argue about numbers all day. And maybe with the next generation of hardware, you know, with a more powerful GPU, it might make sense to have a 250 or 300 PPI screen in the, in the device, but that's a hard maybe. And personally, I'd rather keep the 800p screen in a Steam Deck 2 and get better and more consistent frame rates with a more powerful GPU behind it. But that's just me. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Now, this is a really pernicious myth uh, that the deck is a direct competitor to the Switch. This is absolutely false. By every metric, the Steam Deck and the Switch are categorically different devices and are in no way competing with each other. First of all, the Steam Deck is a gaming PC with a console interface. It's still mostly aimed at PC gamers and requires a tiny bit of know-how to get an optimal gaming experience. Meanwhile, the Switch is an underpowered tablet that's meant for gamers with the console mindset. The Steam Deck can play the vast majority of PC games and a shocking number of emulators right out of the box. The Switch, on the other hand, can only play games officially licensed for sale by Nintendo and only after you've paid the Nintendo tax. Unless you hack it, but then you risk losing access to the eShop. The Steam Deck doesn't need to be hacked. You can drop into the desktop environment and use it just like any other PC, or you can wipe the whole device and install any operating system you'd like, and more, it's your device. Meanwhile, your Switch isn't yours. Your device is really owned by Nintendo, and you aren't allowed to do anything that the fun police at the big N doesn't like. These two devices are fundamentally different. They're targeting two different markets that don't have a whole lot of overlap. And sure, they're both portable gaming devices, but that's a pretty broad phrase that encompasses a lot. And that brings me to the next item on this list. 
The deck is a direct competitor to the GPD Win series or the Aya Neo or any other handheld PC. See, as we've already established, I think it's incredibly weird when someone compares the deck to the Nintendo Switch, mostly because it tells me that whoever's saying it has no perspective on what either device is meant for. But you know what? I think it's even more weird when people compare the Steam Deck to the GPD Win devices or the AN Neo or any other handheld PC. Why? Well, again, it comes back to what these devices are for. See, I bought into the hype of the GPD Win 2 when it was first launched on Indiegogo. I was like, heck yes, of course I want a mobile gaming PC in the palm of my hand. But then I got it in my hands and I was incredibly disappointed. The GPD Win 2 had an anemic CPU with a fundamentally worthless Intel GPU. It had a mouse-driven desktop operating system that you were expected to use with a joystick, and that same operating system consumed 50% of the system's resources after a cold boot. And all of this mashed down into a truly misanthropic chassis that would burn your left hand while chilling your right hand. It was everything that was wrong with the UMPC concept Microsoft was proffering in the mid-2000s, but in 2018. And when I look at all the other offerings from GPD, I see the same issues. Weak sauce GPUs with absurdly oversized screen resolutions, anti-human ergonomics, and a fundamentally broken user experience. And there are companies that come closer. IA Neo devices at least look comfortable to hold. But all of these devices are still living in the desktop space, and they're targeting the desktop PC user. They talk about specs and tout numbers like 1080p resolutions and blah, 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 without realizing that these numbers are at best marketing gimmicks and at worst, actively harming any potential gaming experience. And by relying on the specs to do the marketing, they appeal to a certain crowd of PC gaming enthusiasts that think bigger number go vroom. Meanwhile, Steam Deck's marketing doesn't do that. They're focused on the games and as such have a much broader appeal. The Steam Deck is a console gaming experience that happens to afford you the freedom and benefit of a PC, while the other handheld PCs are basically just desktop computers in your hands. The difference between the two might be subtle, but I feel like it's crucial. A desktop PC, specifically one running Windows, expects you to have a mouse and keyboard connected to the device, with touchscreen functionality haphazardly bolted on as an afterthought. A console, on the other hand, expects you to have a gamepad, and, in this case, has native touchscreen functionality built right in. Imagine, for example, if the original Xbox ran desktop Windows, and you had to have a mouse and keyboard handy in case the game crashed so that you could alt-tab out or give it the old three-finger salute it would not have gotten anywhere in the market. So what does the Steam Deck have? It has a gamepad. And what does the OS expect? Well, a gamepad. What does the Aya Neo have? It has a gamepad. And what does the OS expect? A keyboard and mouse. Now sure, you can get aftermarket front ends to help ease this issue, but it's not the same. The Steam Deck and handheld PCs are entirely different markets. And if you want strong evidence of this, look no further than the price. The Steam Deck starts at $400, while hardware comparable handheld devices start at nearly a thousand. The next myth I want to debunk is one that's particularly pervasive, though it is an idea that has started to wane of late. Linux can't play games, or alternatively, Windows is the only operating system that can play PC games. This is patently false. While frame pacing has been an issue with many titles on Linux and on the Steam Deck, this is slowly becoming a non-issue with further driver development and software optimization. In my experience, games work better on the Steam Deck now than they did when it first launched, which is to be expected, but they also work better on Steam Deck than they do even on my PC. Another ridiculous myth is that Proton adds lag or requires significant additional resources while playing a game, and is therefore slower than running the game natively on Windows. But again, this simply isn't true. In most instances, Proton simply provides the Windows API inside Linux. For non-programmers, Windows provides a set of libraries that are available for programs to use, and when a program is written for Windows, the author of the program depends on the Windows libraries being available for them to access. Now, Proton isn't like an emulator where it has to simulate hardware calls and stuff like that. This isn't Rosetta on Mac OS. It's not like Linux and Windows are using different CPU architectures. Instead, 
Proton just provides a simple map of which Windows system calls map to Linux system calls, and sometimes translates the results of a Linux call to what the Windows application would expect to receive. So for example, if a game is looking for a function called D3D draw in DirectX 12.dll, then Proton would simply provide the game with the Vulkan equivalent. But what's even cooler though, is that if a Windows game relies on SDL or OpenGL or Vulkan or any other cross-platform library, Proton can just point the game to that Linux native version of that library and it doesn't need to do any translation. And sure, there's definitely going to be some level of performance cost with doing any amount of translation. However, whatever overhead might be there during this simple process with Proton is overwhelmingly mitigated by the lightness and simplicity of Linux versus the complexity and blow of Windows. This is why so many games run so much better on Steam Deck and Linux than they do on Windows. And that's not all. The combination of Proton and SteamOS gives Valve the kind of low-level access to optimize performance at the OS level. If they had shipped the deck with Windows, they would have no choice but to leave all the antique, bloated, and legacy code running on in the background, including the Windows desktop that takes up not only RAM, but also GPU cycles. Because that's the thing, on SteamOS, only the things that need to be running are running. The desktop only runs when you actually choose to go to the desktop. Otherwise, game mode is your desktop. SteamOS is optimized for gaming. Meanwhile, Windows is a general purpose operating system that allows gaming to happen. You can't optimize Windows for a gaming experience. It's why Xbox doesn't ship with desktop Windows installed. Now, here's a question. Are you enjoying these videos? Do you like these deep dives into Steam Deck content? Why not like that smash button and maybe even pinch that subscribe button so that you can stay up to date with all the fun stuff we're doing here on the channel. We're about to hit 100,000 subscribers and when we do, I'm gonna be giving away a Steam Deck, not this one, but a brand new one. Make sure that you're publicly subscribed so that you can be eligible to win. And thanks. The next myth I wanna talk about is you can only play Steam games on deck. Now, most of us watching are gonna know that this is just not true, but I have heard a surprising number of people parrot this idea. It's absolutely false. Not only can you play games from Steam, but you can also switch to the Linux desktop and install any number of other games and applications. But once you get them installed though, you can even add them back into the Steam interface and use them without having to go back into desktop mode. For example, I have a ton of emulators installed on my SD card, as well as a bunch of other games. Titles like Ape Escape for the PS1, Smash Bros. Melee for GameCube, Crash Nitro Kart for Switch, and so many others. But you can even use tools like Lutris or Heroic Games Launcher, and these are tools that help you install non-Linux games and software. For example, Heroic lets you buy and install games from Epic and GOG, and Lutris lets you install games from Origin, Epic Games, GOG, Humble, and so many more. There's so many great options available, and I highly recommend you check out both Lutris and Heroic Games Launcher. Bringing a game to Proton or Steam Deck is trivial for every developer. So a few months ago, Epic Games announced that Easy Any Cheat was releasing a Proton compatible version that would allow devs to support their games on the Steam Deck. And so many folks rejoiced, including myself. And when Epic announced this, they said that it was as easy as going into the Epic Online Services dashboard and ticking a checkbox and then shipping the Proton compatible library with the game. And similarly, BattleEye has said that all a dev needs to do is email their support team and they will enable Proton support for the title. And this definitely does work for some games implementing these services, but this has proved to not be so straightforward for many other devs. For example, 343 Industries, the company behind the Halo series, has shipped the Easy Any Cheat Proton library back in April with Halo The Master Chief Collection, yet they still haven't been able to get it working. According to a 343 dev on the Halo subreddit, quote, we continue to work with Valve and Easy Any Cheat to enable Easy Any Cheat support on Steam Deck for Master Chief Collection. The addition of the Easy Any Cheat x64.so file is one of the prerequisites for getting this game to work, but there are ongoing compatibility issues that our three teams are collectively working to resolve. The ongoing compatibility issues mean that we only have a few pieces of the overall puzzle as everyone's working through their side of the issue. And they can confirm that they've actually ticked the box in the Easy Anti dashboard. Now, all of this is to say, it's possible to enable Proton support in Easy Anti and add the EAC Proton file 
and still encounter issues with the game on Proton. And those could be any number of things. Maybe your game doesn't actually support Proton to begin with, and you need to sort that out first. Or maybe your single player mode works, but the multiplayer code needs something from Proton that it doesn't supply yet. There's any number of reasons that it might not be working, and it's not just as simple as add the file and tick the box. And finally, the last myth of this video, once you have your Steam Deck, you'll never play games on your gaming PC again. Now, this is one of those myths that actually has a kernel of truth to it. I work for myself, I run my company, and I spend the vast majority of my time in this office, working right here at my PC. So you can imagine that I don't want to be sitting here all day playing games at my desk after I'm done work. It's not good for my mental health or my work hygiene. So when I got my Steam Deck, you can imagine how happy I was to be able to play games, to play my Steam library, the games I already own, away from my computer, sitting on the sofa and having a good time. And yeah, it's cool to travel with the deck. I've played it on airplanes and in hotel rooms, but honestly, it's just much nicer playing it on my sofa. So many of the comments on my videos and on Twitter have agreed with this. Follow me at Gardner Bryant for biased opinions and spicy takes, by the way. Many folks just want to get away from their PC and play games somewhere else in the house. And the fact that the deck enables us to do just that makes all the difference. Now, it might not be true for you. Maybe you do prefer sitting at your desk all the time to do everything. Or maybe you don't work from your desk and go to work and then want to come home and sit down and play. And that's perfectly fine. Maybe that myth isn't true for you, but for me, it's definitely the case. But I want to know, where do you find your playing Steam Deck most often? Leave me a comment and let me know. I would love to hear from you. Now, I want to give a special shout out to my friends on Patreon and my YouTube members. It's because of these fine folks that I've been able to continue to grow this show. So thank you. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and you want to help this show grow, you can pledge your monthly support using the links below to become a Steam Deck warrior. And thanks. That's going to do it for now, though. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time and have a blessed day.